Praise God. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, it's my pleasure to be with you another Sunday to share with you the good news of Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. This morning, our message is entitled, To Everything There Is a Season. Let me just repeat that for you. To everything, there is a season. Our scripture reading will be taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. We're going to read from verse 1. I'm just going to read about two verses, and then we're going to get into it via uh, the word of God. Praise God. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Father, we praise your name this morning, Father, for everything, Lord God, there is a season for everything. Father, we pray, Lord God, as this word, Lord God, go forth. Father, as this word touch the hearts and lives of men and women all over. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you will use it this morning, Lord God, to minister to the hearts, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. And the scripture reading says this from verse 1. To everything is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. Verse 2 goes on to say, a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Verse 5 goes on to say, a time to cast away stone, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. I've come up with three keys to your seasons. I was home just this week and I recognized, in fact, my wife brought it to my attention how the ants were invading our homes. And for some reason, they decided to move from where they were nesting and to relocate inside the house. That day brought to my attention the changing of seasons. For in Trinidad and Tobago, we recognize that we also operate in season. If you have been noticing for the past six months or so, we've been in a very dry, dry season. Where the plants and the grass from a green, luscious green turned into a dismal brown. Everything changed. Everything started to look different. But when I recognize that the ants started making their movement, I don't know what told them or tell them that, hey, the season is changing. I recognize not only that, but that same day that I noticed the ants moving in, that rain came. And with that, the announcement came that we have just entered into the rainy season. Therefore, seasonal things happen. Life is consist of seasons. Sometimes we may think of our lives as being one way all the time, but may I suggest to you that life is also a time of seasons. You must therefore recognize these three principles. One, you must appreciate the fact that seasons do come. Seasons are part of life. Sometimes, in fact, I love how of the book of Ecclesiastes puts it, especially in chapter 12 from verse 1 to 8. It gives you a clear description of a man's life in season. It says with verse 1, Remember now the Creator in the days of your youth. 
Youth is a part and a season of one's life that one cannot ignore. That's the time when you can do things that makes you feel like Superman. You do things without even thinking sometimes. You feel so invincible. I remember when I was around the age of 14, 15, and you see the characters on television, Superwoman, Superman, and you also feel to yourself that you are invincible. As a young man, you will think that, hey, the world is at my feet. But as you grow older, you recognize that things change. You recognize that the seasons in your life changes. You go, I remember as a young guy, I used to play football. I played a little cricket. And I thought to myself that, hey, nothing can beat me. I was the best, I think, at what I did. I, and and I, I was proud of that. A few years ago, we went and we had, and some of you all may remember, the Christian League. And I remember, uh, you know, talking to one of these guys. I said, listen, form is temporal, but class is permanent. And I was there, and I tried to, to do some things that I did when I was younger. And I recognize that my season had changed. I recognize that doing the things that I used to do so easily before, it took much more effort. It took much more willpower just to get from one side of the field to the other. Therefore, I understand that my season has changed. This brings me to the third point. The, 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 the second point is preparation for your season. These answers, I said, they were preparing for the changing of the season. Many times we, as people, we fail to prepare for our seasons. And may I say to you, in each and every person's life, there is a season. The, 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 the book tells us when we read uh, down further down in chapter 3 uh, from verse 1 onwards, it tells you that there is a time to, born, to be born, but there is also a time you will die. There is a time to plant, and may I show, share with you the time to plant and the time to pluck up that which is planted, there may be something between called time. It's not common that you will plant today and reap tomorrow. We must understand that in preparation for our season, we need to understand that we operate in time. We therefore need to understand that before I could get to that stage of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, later down in the verse, way down there close to verse 8, we must understand that there's something called time. Therefore, preparation must be made in how I intend to spend my time. Do I expect at the end of all this, when the Bible describes it in, in, in chapter 12, that hey, the grinders are few. And this brings me to a very funny point. I remember uh, just about a week or two ago, my wife went to the doctor to extract a teeth. And while she's there, the scripture came to my mind. When the grinders become few. Some of you are blushed with that beautiful smile. You have everything in. But the day will come when the grinders become few. What do you do between when you are young and that day comes all depends on your preparation. What kind of preparation you've made will determine how you enjoy or endure the time of the grinders being few. It also describes the idea of those that peeps out of the windows or your eyes become dim. 
If we don't prepare for these seasons in our lives, when we come to them, we will either regret it or we will think to ourselves, it just was not worth it. The point I'm making is, it's all season. In all season, we need to be prepared. We then therefore have to take up the responsibility of being prepared. The thing about it is, in God, there is seasons. Even as the natural things around us has season, we therefore need to prepare for eternal season. This life does not only consist of me being here and gathering wealth for here. But Jesus himself said, listen, why store up your goods where mutt and rot can corrupt? There is a better place for you to prepare for. There is a place that you need to store your goods for the eternity. That place, may I say to you, is not here on earth. Therefore, we need to prepare for that life after. Some people get on or behave as though they are here forever. Some, I remember one time in Sunday school, this was years, years ago. A Sunday school teacher asked one of, our, one of his students. I was sitting in the class and the Sunday school teacher asked him, he said, Do you know if you're going to live to see tomorrow? And with a cocky uh, uh, eight-year-old, he said, yeah, I'm sure I'm going to live until tomorrow. I am sure. Sometimes we think that life only is, is in our hands and the power of life is in our grasp. And we can determine what our tomorrow is. But let me be assured or let me let you know for a fact that life is only in the hands of God. In fact, if you are to examine it in the book of Daniel, Daniel tells you this. That hey, life can change on you. We think about the king. He was in there in his splendor. And the day came when he cursed God. And God did at that time and that moment change his season. The thing about it is, we may be living in season thinking that, hey, this is my season to do what I want, how I want, when I want. And, and you get on like if that you control your season and your time. But all of this is in the hand of God. Your time and your season. Let me ask you a very important question. What season are you in? Because my next point is, in order after you've prepared, you must recognize. A lot of us don't recognize what seasons we're in. A lot of us just go through the seasons and don't understand via preparation for what season I am presently in. Listen, after this covert a lot of us find ourselves in a season with lack. A lot of us find ourselves in seasons that we have short. We have now gathered to ourselves needs. I've never seen bills come around as fast as they did now. Or as they do now. Listen, as the time, soon as you wink, another bill is there. Your seasons, you must recognize them. Today, can I ask you a very important question? What season are you in? In fact, the Bible describes sin as a season. In fact, the pleasures of sin, it will only last for a season. Sir, if you could bear with me, if you could put your mind in recollection and think back, what season are you in? Are you still in the season of sin? Are you still there in that season where you think that, hey, everything is okay, let me live fast, die young, make a pretty corpse, and you think that that season is the only season that matter? So today a lot of us, we don't recognize what season we are in, that the season that we are in, it's short. 
the season of sin so don't last forever madam it's not all the time you will have that coca-cola shape it's not all that time, sir. You will have that six pack. Maybe you are like me. We we'll transferred from a six pack to a case. I don't know, but seasons change. You therefore need to recognize now if you are living in your season of sin, it's time to change. Talking about change, could I quote what Daniel says? Daniel chapter 2 from verse 21, it says this, And he who is God changed at the time and the season. He removed king and he set it up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge unto them that understands. It's very important for us to understand the, 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 the season you are in. And not only that, if you find yourself in a season of sin, you must understand that I can have my seasons changed. Just as our natural seasons can change, sir, the, the, the man who creates season has the authority and the ability to change your season. You see, I remember when I was in that season of sin, I had no aim. I just drifted along. The psalm says, it's like a shaft which the wind driveth. Wherever it drives me, I will go. But I remember coming to the end of that season. I remember God changing my season. You see, sometimes we think that dry season is the best season. Because maybe if you're in construction, this is the best time to dig up. It's the best time to put down a good foundation. So therefore, once you recognize which season you are in, you will therefore know how to build on your season. The point I'm making is this. The season that you are in, God has the ability to change your season from a bad season into a good one. You see, sometimes we go around thinking that, hey, listen, it makes no use. It makes no sense. All my labors seems to be in vain. I remember one student who told me that, hey, listen, being in school here, to me, it's a waste of time. And whilst chatting with her, I recognized that she thought that this is the only season in her life having to go through the education process. But I, after explaining to her that the education process, being a young, you are pe doing preparative work. By gaining an education now, you are doing preparation work. Therefore, when you get older and you start putting those things that you have prepared into action, you will then recognize what you have done in the earlies. This brings me to my third point. My third point is, you must then embrace your seasons. You may say it's difficult to embrace the season when I am in pain. Because truly, the Bible says that there is a time to die. There is a time to mourn. There is a time to cry out in pain. But listen to me. The season that you must embrace, you must embrace it with God. Because without God in your season, it will only end up as a season of pain. That's a season none of us wants to embrace. Because a season of bitterness only cannot bring you satisfaction. But when you are in God and you understand that my brainy season or my dry season will not last forever. You will then understand the importance of embracing. Because truly, there's a time to gather stones together. I don't know what kinds of stones you've been gathering together. 
But sometimes there comes a times, most of the times, when there's a time that you will need to cast stones away. When I thought about this portion of scripture, I think about people, the, the, the saying, he that lives in a glass house does not throw stones. Sometimes we throw our stones at people thinking that, hey, this will make me better than them. Sometimes in our season, when we feel pain, when we feel the pressure, when we feel that it's a time to mourn, sometimes we throw stones. But listen, in your season, once you understand the season you are in, you can embrace it knowing that God is and will change your seasons. There is no season that stays forever. We have just entered into our rainy season here in the Caribbean. And I can guarantee you, once God uh, permits, uh, once God doesn't come before, we will witness a change of season. Sometimes you may have it good and hope that this good season will last forever. But in life, seasons will change. Therefore, you need to understand by me preparing, by me recognizing, I can then embrace. What is your season? Are you sick in a bed and you can't move? Are you there that without the understanding of, hey, where my next meal will come from? One scripture says, I will look to the hills from when cometh my help. My help cometh only from the Lord. And not only the Lord, but that same God who made heaven and earth. So today that God is the same God that wants to change your seasons. Therefore, you can embrace your season. Therefore, you can hold on to your season, knowing that God has done exactly what he said he would have done. Way back there in the book of Genesis, when he proclaimed that, hey, you may bruise his heel, but he will crush the head of the serpent. So today, I'm glad to say to you, the biggest season that you may need change in your life is that season of sin into that season of salvation which Jesus Christ has prepared for you he's done all the work that's what I love about it you and I don't need to go and do no sort of sacrifices anymore you and I don't have to go and look for money to pay for it you and I don't have to go and say any prayers for it. The work has already been done. What you need to do is embrace that work. That work you cannot pay for because, sir, the price has been paid already. The Bible says that that blood which was shed on Calvary, that innocent blood which was shed on Calvary, that was the price being paid for you and I for all all our sins sir today you need to embrace and what you need to embrace is the work that Jesus did on Calvary's cross for you and for me many of us we refuse you may have done some preparations you may have recognized some things but you have failed to embrace it in this time of COVID, I recognize that I will have to embrace a few things. Number one, life is not the same. After COVID, it will not be the same. The way we do things will change. Some for the good and some not so good. But all in the, the, the going forward, if you have to, to, to preserve life, things will change. This covert has been a life changing or a season changer for many. I know some of you like to drink. You like to go in certain places and drink. But you've recognized now that the season has changed. It has made life different.
you will then need to operate differently therefore when you understand and embrace your seasons your reaction to things will change as a Christian I've recognized that my reaction because I've embraced Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior the changer of my season I recognize that hey my attitudes towards certain things had to be readjusted because I've embraced him I cannot no longer do the things I used to do I had to organize my seasons according to the word of God so today is your chance and opportunity after you have embraced this salvation after you have taken and recognized that work that he have done after you have done made your preparation so the preparation you need to then allow him to do his work allow God to do his work in your life through your life allow God to do it because you cannot do it on your own so you can you have no power to change your seasons by yourself but with God all things are possible I don't know what season you may think you're in as I bring this broadcast to a close I may not understand which season you're in if you're in a planting season as, as, as we celebrate Corpus Christi we say this is a time to plant I don't know I don't know but what I understand about this whole thing is hey if there is a time to love that there is a time for peace this could be your time this could be your season and it's only in Jesus Christ would you bow your heads with me would you pray with me in fact I could see that person stretching their hands towards the television I could see that person reaching their hands to their heart saying Lord I need my season change he has the power to change it. Would you bow with me right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, you've seen each and every person, Lord God, tuned into this broadcast. Father, you've seen, Lord God, their seasons. You, Lord God says that you will give understanding Lord God to those who seek knowledge Lord God today they're seeking how to change my season father in the name of Jesus I pray Lord God right now that you will break through in that dry season right now in the name of Jesus father I pray Lord God that you will minister right now that season of salvation father in the name of Jesus father touch them now in Jesus name I'm brother Curtis I'm glad to be with you a Sunday morning I'm glad to share with you the good news of Jesus Christ God bless you until another time amen